Brandon, how exciting is it to not be preparing to fight Devison Figueroa? <laughs> Let's go, man. I always, I always answer the same, man. I mean, I feel very grateful with Davison for what I, we did in, in, in the UFC, in the MMA, you know, for our careers, for the history of the sport. But, I mean, of course, uh, I feel happy at the same time, you know, to fight with another guy, you know. I, I, I felt this kind of uh, fresh air when I fought against Skycar France in Dallas, and this one is the same. I feel very cool. Uh, Pantosha was here earlier. He had a lot of respect for you. Uh, but I know he was kind of like right in front of your face saying, let's fight, let's get this going. Did that make it kind of personal for you at all? Nah, nah man. I mean, sorry if I'm not this guy who loves to to talk shit in social media or try to to make some drama. But at the end, that works for me, man. You know, the people love what I'm doing because it's real, it's natural. So I have nothing uh, personal against Alexander Pantoja. For sure, this uh, uh, competitive part of myself, knowing he beat me twice in the past, uh, gave me a an, uh, an different flavor, for sure. But at the same time, I'm just thinking about the opportunity, man. The opportunity to, hey, if you beat Alexander Pantoja in the T-Mobile Arena, International Fight Week, man, your legacy, man, your legacy. So I'm just like very focused in, the, in that uh, last goal to, to, to win my next fight, my, first, my second first title defense. <laughs> it is interesting, right, the history between you two that he has beaten you twice. I mean... How much does that impact this? Like, is there like a mental thing there when you get in there or something, you know, about the technique? I mean, how much do those two last fights affect this fight? I mean, I think, I don't know how he's managing this new uh, fight against me because I, I've been, like, watching, like, an, like a uh, stalker, all uh, his interviews and everything, and I can see it, and he say no, but... I can feel like he's motivated, like, hey, I know, I beat him. I can do it again, you know? He has this, uh, that, that kind of sensation. I can see it in his face and, and how he, uh, in his body langu language. For me, it's just that completed part. Like, man, he, he beat you, but you need to know you are so different. And I don't like to talk too much about, like, oh, I'm a different fire and whatever, because I don't even need to talk about it. The people can say it. I mean, a lot of fighters say, uh, like, oh, I'm a different fighter, I changed too much. But then you watch the, their fights, and it's kind of the same, you know? But my situation, I always put this example, like, it's very similar, for example, with Charles Oliveira. Like, when he, came to the UFC, he was a kind of, uh, you know, a good fighter, winning some fights, losing some fights, then getting some bonuses, then loses again, but then he started to win and win and win, and everybody was like, what happened with this guy? Why he's just winning? And then he got the title, he lost against Makashev, but then he got this amazing victory against Benil Darius, so I think it's very hard to find examples like that, and I feel I'm that kind of example. You know, I just change. I'm just different. You know, talking about the technical part, talking about the the mental part, um, and that's it. Man. I just want to show that to the world this Saturday. I don't want to talk too much about it, but man, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to 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 shine this this Saturday. Last thing for me, you know, you had this long chapter with Davis and Figueredo, and then you mentioned this one kind of for your legacy to get the. Are there other fights that you see on the horizon for yourself that you need for your legacy or you want for your legacy? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, man, I'm focusing in Patoja right now. I know I can start to talk and say, like, yeah, I'm going to fight with this, with this, with this. But, man, I, I can't disrespect Patoja right now. And actually, I don't want to say a, a, any name right now. I want to be very focused in Patoja because he, I know he's motivated. He won my head and he won my belt. And, man, this one is mine. I, I, not this one, but <laughs> you understand. Brandon, right here. Uh, you mentioned, you know, this is the first defense of the second reign. Um, what do you want this one to be different compared to your first time, like both mentally and just how you're trying to perceive yourself as a champion? Yes, I mean, I, I was talking uh, about this uh, before. I remember my first title defense in, in Anaheim. Uh, everything changed, uh, talking about 
I mean, my media obligations, all the all the cameras, the interviews, man, that can be very stressful at the end. I, I remember myself finishing, I don't know, I, I remember uh, Tuesday or Wednesday after all the media, uh, I, I went to my room, I was like, oh man, I'm so exhausted. I mean, I'm done. But then I remember, like, oh, you, now you need to train and sweat because you need to make way this Friday. Like, oh my goodness. So I just tried to learn from that. Do you, and, yeah. do you feel like you, in hindsight, maybe you weren't quite ready for that and now you are? Yeah, I mean, I mean for sure. I mean, the experience. I mean, I know it. And I, every single fight, I know what is coming. You know, uh, I, uh, uh, I speak English, I speak Spanish. So I know every single interview is both languages, for example, I'm just doing examples, and I change my trainings, for example, um, and now I train in the morning, and I spend all my, my energy in, the, in that training, then I go for the media, and if, sorry, but at the end, if I'm tired, like, I mean, if I do a bad interview, <laughs> and um, the last fight, I know the transition between camps, you went to Fortis and it was, it was a little bit chaotic, but now you've had, you know, the full proper camp was safe and everything. Can you just talk about how that relationship is growing and what it's been like to train there? Man, safe and I, we made on a huge conne connection uh, almost immediately. So last year, 2022, was, uh, I mean, came with a lot of drama because I changed my team from Tijuana to Kansas City with James. The people know what happened. Then I needed to find immediately another head coach. A safe came with us, trying to help, and we make that connection immediately, and that works because when we start to to work together, we had just like four weeks to prepare for Davis and Figueroa in Rio. So man, we we did an amazing time in a short period of time. For this new training camp, uh, I went to, to Dallas, I went to Fortis MMA, I, I met all the guys, everybody were uh, very nice with me, and man, the, the training camp was insane, was very hard. But I love that because at the same time we keep this balance between and a crazy hard uh, training camp and taking care of my body, you know, uh, getting that recovery you needed at the end of the week. So, man, I'm just excited, man. I'm just ready to fight. I'm, di I'm dying right now. I need food. I need, um, I need, you know, some pics or whatever. But just give me that, and after that, just kicking asses sometime uh, this Saturday. <laughs> Brandon, Brandon, over here. Um, if, if I had told you uh, when you lost to Alexandre the, the first time and the ultimate fighter that you'd be fighting a third time but for the UFC title, like, years later, what would you have said then? Um, I don't know. Maybe yes, because I, I was very young, you know, he was having a, an, a good moment, and in my mind, when I lost against him, yes, for example, maybe, I'm trying to remember, maybe the first moment was very hard, like, oh, I don't know, you have these negative thoughts in your mind, like, I don't know if this is for me, I don't know if I want to keep going, blah, 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 you wake up in the morning, and you need to go and train, and like, I don't know, if, I'm not sure if I want to go to train today, you know, but in the moment when I pass all those uh, negative thoughts, uh, I was focused on uh, just keep going. Like, I mean, I need to keep going. I need to keep fighting, not just for me. I mean, for my wife, for my daughters, for my teammates, for all the people who believe in me. And I don't know, I mean, I mean if you told me that in that moment, like, yeah, like Joe, yes, for sure. Just, just give me, give me uh, a new opportunity. Is any part of you jealous about Yair's custom belt that he's been carrying around? Oh, man, I mean, it's beautiful. Actually, the belt is so beautiful. I don't know, I don't know if you had the opportunity yet to, to watch the, the, the belt right here with, because he, he brings the, the belt with him. But it's beautiful. It's very nice. I mean, not jealous, but it's, 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 just, very, it's just very nice. And then last one for me, Saturday is going to be Robbie Lawler's last fight, uh, and then he's going to retire. I'm curious if you have any favorite memories or favorite fights from his career. Man, of Robbie? Yeah. I mean... Of course, man. That one with Roy McDonald, I mean, if you are a huge uh, UFC fan, you can't forget that one. I mean, uh, he's a warrior, and I'm just uh, happy to share the, the car with him. Brandon, Brandon. back here. Oh. Um, you, <laughs> you called out Henry Cejudo uh, a, a few times. What about that fight um, excites you? Is it because you guys... You used to be close, and now you're not. Is it because you want to go chase greatness? Like, what about that fight excites you? Man, 
Sorry, but I'm so focused for uh, focused for uh, for Pantoja, so I don't have like any comments about Henry Cejudo right now. I'm sorry. That's all good. Um, what's your most valuable Pokemon card? Oh man! So let me tell you. So everybody saw that, that embedded with my with my daughter uh, opened the cards this weekend. She actually she opened a, a package with a really value uh, a Japanese card about a uh, Mew in a new collection is Pokemon 151. It's about the first generation of Pokemons. That one is very cool, it's in gold. Uh, I, I Actually, it's funny because I told, I told her like, hey, you, we need to take care of this one because maybe I pay the college with this one, so you never know. Awesome, thank you. Right back here. Oh, right here. Hi, how you doing? Uh, so the first time you guys fought was on the top, the second time you guys fought was on the prelims. How does it feel that both you guys have elevated your careers to the point now that you're in the co-main event of one of the UFC's premier events? No, man, I, I'm happy for him and I'm happy for, for myself, obviously, you know? At the end of the day, I'm fighting for this, you know? Uh, I don't know, in the past I was just happy thinking, in, hey, hopefully one day, I'm gonna fight in the international fight with not even thinking about belts, not even thinking about main events or you know main cards. I just I just wanna fight there. Awesome. But now I don't know, nothing. I mean I just now I'm fighting that, you know. A Pandoja, happy for him for what he's doing. And there's three teams that are guaranteed like depth, taxes, and both of you guys put on an exciting fight. So um as far as the fight goes, are you is there a level of importance of stealing the show, putting on an incredible fight, or is it about beating him and keeping it about like is is uh, pleasing the crowd one of those top priorities as much as keeping oh, it? Oh man, man, my mind is up, right now is focused just about the winning man. I just want to win. I don't care nothing more. I, I man, I'm just so focused focusing winning. Oof, just to think about winning right now, I, oh, my my skin man. I just want to win. Brand one new. more question for me. Um, so this is the first time fighting in Las Vegas in three years. How's it feel to be back? And how do you feel about the reception you got? Man, I, I'm expecting a lot of Mexican flags around the arena, around the T-Mobile uh, this Saturday. So that, the first time was against Kaikara France, 2019. Uh, that was cool, but it, I think it was the second or third fight of the card. Uh, the last one was at the Apex against Davison with no crowd for the pandemic. Now we came in a different way for sure, and, and I'm expecting fireworks about, uh, from the people. Yeah, Brandon. Just uh, quick over here. Um, you mentioned being at Fortis MMA. Who did you mainly get to train with over there? Because when you think of that gym, it's a lot of uh, you know fighters in higher weight classes. We see Marcelo Rojo here. Who else did you get to work with? No, Marcelo is I don't, not a fight right now. He's going to fight it's coming soon in July 15, so he's in shape. <laughs> he's making weight. But there in, 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 in Dallas, I had uh, two is, is specific training partners. Uh, Nick Piccinini, who is uh, All-American in wrestling. He helped me like a lot and another one was uh, Ian Eggbrooks uh, is I mean, all those guys helped me a lot gave me a lot of hard uh, uh, sparring sessions and then I feel really prepared and hopefully they they uh, will be very cool if they uh, stay here but they came back to to Dallas but man I mean Nick and, and, and Ian those guys helped me a lot for this preparation just last one for me. Have you been given any indication who will fight the winner of this? Is it going to be Brandon Royville or Amir Albazi? What, what do you think sort of will, will be next uh, for the winner of this fight? I mean, I, I think, I mean, uh, Brandon Royville is actually here, you know, for, uh, for a backup, uh, as a backup fighter. So after this fight, yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm not even thinking about the future, but yeah, I mean, Royville is there. Brandon, uh, back here too. Uh, you know, obviously a lot's been made of, of the fact that you've lost to him twice now, but you're still a betting favorite, you know, what, <clears throat> what does that mean to you, you know, that at least the odds makers still think that you're at least a better fighter? Man, in the past when I, when I was the, the favorite in, in the, in the odds, I lost, so that doesn't mean nothing for me, man. I just, actually, I'm trying to never watch nothing about bets, about odds, who's the favorite, who's the underdog, because for me that doesn't, ma doesn't matter. Uh, actually, I think that's an extra motivation for Pantoja, like, oh, I'm the underdog, okay. So I'm taking care of that, okay? I'm thinking about it, and I'm just trying to win, man. I don't care nothing more. Perfect. And last question. It's not the exact same situation by any means, but obviously uh, back in, I believe, April, we saw Israel Adesanya, you know, beat someone who had beat him multiple times, and the, the eruption from the athlete itself in the arena was pretty crazy. Do you see that same situation playing out for you if you win on Saturday night? 
Man, I mean, in the past, uh, Pantoja, obviously, before to to Alexaria lost against uh, 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 Alex uh, lost against Aesania, but Pantoja say, oh, I'm mean, his Patan, like maybe yes, maybe he he's. We did it, guys. Let's go.